How can evolution and faith be reconciled? Have I led us into a dilemma here by talking about my own faith conversion and then telling you that I think evolution is true? Well, actually, no. 40% of scientists are believers in a personal God. Most of them, from my experience, have arrived at the same way of putting this together, a way that is actually pretty simple and almost obvious, but it's amazing how little it gets talked about. And it goes like this. Almighty God, who is not limited in space or time, created our universe 13.7 billion years ago with that fine-tuning, the parameters precisely set to allow the development of complexity over long periods of time, all very intentional. God's plan included the mechanism of evolution. That was the way in which the marvelous diversity of living things on our planet was to come to be. And most especially, that plan included us, human beings. After evolution in the fullness of time, which is a long time for us, but maybe a blink of the eye for God, had prepared a sufficiently advanced neurological house, the brain, which would be pretty necessary for what's to come here, God then gifted humanity with free will and with a soul. Thus humans at that point received this special status, which in biblical terms is made in God's image, but I don't think God is a kindly gentleman with a flowing white beard in the sky. I think made in God's image is about mind and not about body. We humans, having been given those gifts, and here you'll recognize the story of the Garden of Eden, used our free will to disobey God, leading to our realization of being in violation of the moral law, and thus we were estranged from God. For Christians, as I learned, as I was trying to figure this all out, Jesus is the solution to that estrangement. That's it, a very simple but I think entirely compatible view that does no violence either to faith or to science and puts them in a harmonious position that both explains the way in which origins can be thought about and puts us in a position to be able to further explore the consequences. Now this is often called theistic evolution. It's not a term that many people are all that comfortable with, including me. Evolution is the noun, theistic is the adjective, sort of sounds like you're tipping the balance there in the favor of the scientific view, and a lot of people aren't quite sure what theistic means anyway, so <laughs> maybe we need a better term. One possibility is to think about what this means. Well, it means life, bios, by God speaking us into being, the logos. In the beginning was the word, the first chapter of John. Life through the word, bios through logos, or just simply biologos. And that is perhaps a useful alternative instead of theistic evolution. And in that regard, as the title of my book indicates, then maybe we could think about this universal code of life, the DNA molecule, as the language of God. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.